Now, the wheels fell off the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in week three, losing 37 to 13 to the Montreal Alouettes. While quarterback Cody Fajardo blamed injuries and a short week for the loss, outside voices thought differently. As former CFL coach Jeff Reinbold called out the Riders for penalty troubles, saying, quote, they are going to be watching someone else play the Grey Cup in their building. Who is more right? Ooh, well, I got to go with Reinbold here, to be honest, because those penalty woes have been consistent through the first three games for the Rough Riders. And yes, they still won the first two, but at key times, especially if you get into another West West final with, you know, let's say possibly the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, you can't afford to have those types of penalties and then expect to win the ball game. You're going to have to battle against a lot of adversity to get it done. So they need to fix it. Is it a major issue? Not necessarily because they are still two and one. I think there was a lot stacked against the Riders in that short week. And Fajardo had a brace on. He said his knee was a little banged up and he's, of course, going to play through it. But that could have been a factor as well. And the scoreline was a little inflated in my mind when you get some of those turnovers piling up and the points happen quickly off of them. And it just was not an ideal situation for Saskatchewan to go from a physical game in Edmonton where they needed to win it in the last five minutes. Fajardo spinning away from that Chris Jones blitz and hitting Mitch Picton for what would be the game winning touchdown to traveling home short week. They didn't have one real practice really to prep for Montreal. And then you go to Montreal who was upset after an 0 two start and probably had a bunch of fuel charged up when they saw that Trevor Harris was going to be the guy at quarterback because he's more consistent there. And then you got Gary Stern chirping on Twitter and, you know, it makes for great headlines, but I just think everything was going against the riders in that situation. So they're not as bad as they were in Montreal. Are they as good as they looked in that 2-0 start? And especially how well they played against Hamilton is probably somewhere in the middle, but This week for the Riders is very key in terms of their mental makeup and character. We're going to find out what these dudes are made of when they step on the field in that rematch against Montreal. Let's just put these discipline issues in perspective because I've got the numbers in front of me here. 34 penalties over three games for 325 yards. That's an insane. They were over 100 yards in, I think, all three games. That's basically what you can expect as an offense against the BC lines at the most right now. So <laughs> that is a significant number that has to change. And as Jeff Reinbold pointed out, Craig Dickinson has talked about this extensively and the locker room doesn't seem to be listening. So someone has to step up to the plate and be a leader here. But That's for me, the part to me is you need to have guys that are going to police themselves or as a coach, With Dickinson, you're going to have to show these guys that they're going to lose the one thing that is so critical to their careers, playing time to keep taking these stupid penalties. Now, I get it if it's a primetime player and the Moncrief ejection is probably a one-off because he's usually a pretty chill dude. So I think something must have happened there against the Elks to really set him off. But Dickinson might have to make an example of somebody because if these penalty woes continue, the pressure is going to crank up on Dickinson, and especially if the penalty woes happen to keep them out of a gray cup, then there's going to be talk about Dickinson and how he did not deal with that issue during the regular season. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But for me, I think the bigger issue, the thing I'm more concerned about when it comes to the Saskatchewan Rough Riders is their offense right now. Well, you look, they're in the middle of the pack in most categories for for overall uh, statistics in the league, they've been able to notch two wins. But if you look at those two wins, it was late surges from them, late points that was able to put them over the top. And they were really inconsistent in the early going. And they showed that again against Montreal. I had high hopes for this offense coming into this year, but the obstacles are starting to stack up, right? Kyron Moore, uh, you know, misses the first part of the season. He's on the six game injured list. Uh, Duke Williams has been banged up. Shaq Evans is now on the six game injured list, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And you're missing your starting center in Dan Clark, which had a devastating impact against the Alouettes. Eight sacks given up by that offensive line as they were starting rookie Logan Bandy in the middle. It's going to be a huge challenge 
for them to sort out those issues and be able to be more consistent and put up points earlier in games and throughout football games in order to get more wins on the board. And I, I think some of the blame here, in my opinion, has to go a little bit to Jason Moss, the offensive coordinator. I haven't loved the way he's run that scheme this year so far. I think they need to get Keon Schaefer Baker more involved in more creative ways because he's such a dynamic weapon, such an athlete, and he hasn't been utilized as such, in my opinion, with that many injuries in the receiving core that has to change going forward. Agreed. Schaefer Baker needs to see more footballs and perhaps Evans being out of the lineup opens that up. It's kind of difficult when you have Duke Williams and Shaq Evans too high end guys to spread the ball around a ton when you want to feature them and have a bunch of targets. And we know Moss loves Williams, goes back to their days together in Edmonton. So I would look for Schaefer Baker to step up in terms of getting more targets with Evans out of the lineup. And you're right in the sense that the riders need to get the penalty situation figured out and under control pretty quickly. Otherwise, it's going to start costing them wins. And in this West division that looks ultra competitive, you have multiple teams that are currently undefeated. You're going to want to try to get some of that home field advantage if you legitimately think you have a shot to get to the Great Cup game at Mosaic Stadium. And the Rough Riders should. They have a stout defense. Jason Chavez has been great in terms of coordinating everything on that side of the football. Special teams has been solid, but the offense needs to bring it. And I think more consistently Fajardo turned the ball over there in Montreal. And even though he's beat up a little bit, you got to take care of that ball, man. That's what really inflated that scoreline in my mind, because you can't be doing that kind of thing in the playoffs. And even though they almost battled through it in the last West final they played in, in Winnipeg, that's an issue. Cody Fajardo needs to clean it up and have a better touchdown interception ratio. He absolutely does. And we talked about Nathan Rourke elevating the team around him. In his first season, Kogi Fajardo did that. I haven't seen it since. I mean, it, that needs to change for the Riders to be successful. Yes, sir.